that is my talk for the day is my dissertation in my undergrad looking at forensic file representations for reducing the amount of data that needs to be processed during a forensic uh, investigation. So this kind of came from a bit of inspiration from previous work in the fields by some uh, by the lecturer Sean McEwen, who most of you might know. But uh, I'll get to that in a minute. So for those that don't know who I am, I'm a master's uh, on this advanced security and digital forensics at Edinburgh Napier. I am also currently serving as treasurer of NSEC, and I am now a consultancy analyst with TSB. Don't ask me what that is, I'm yet to find out. But as you can see, my days are uh, very productive and I get a lot done. So the entire concept of what I was working on is a bit like this. Public sector forensics, namely police, um, is what this applies to. It's analyzing drives for, <laughs> for the dark section of this industry, which is illicit content, and we shall leave it at that. Um, but basically the way it works is mostly it's a database of known hashes, known identifying features for already discovered illicit content. So you get the evidence image where you then get the hash and then that acts as a unique fingerprint to look up within a database. And I kind of took that and ran with it a wee bit. And the reason I'm doing this is the fact that there is a massive backlog within digital forensics, as well as uh, the previous work I mentioned on kind of representation reduction techniques. As Sean, we got talking about it after he presented his PhD thesis at Latour de Hack 2019. And that's kind of where this project came from. Uh, so essentially this pres presentation is going to sum up what my undergrad looked at, the results I drew from it, and where I'm going to take it for my master's dissertation. Um, so as I mentioned, the backlog kind of looks a little bit like this, where you've got this massive data reservoir of things that need to be processed. And from there, it's this tiny stream that is the processing, te uh, processing methods, the techniques, the process itself, and makes its way into this evidence pool of sifting through data that is evidence and is relevant, as well as also w that which is not. It's the process of going through all the data to find the evidence and any relevant files that causes the backlog mainly because of the significant increase in the size of drives and the speed rates of them as well, uh, speed read rates. And the problem rose about 10 years ago when large scale development, uh, not large scale, large scale purchasing of large storage devices, hard drives, SSDs, first became more readily available. And it is that that caused this backlog to uh, just keep growing. So forensic practitioners begin to look a little like this. And the problem with current and future devices, kind of the scalability of this, hello? Okay. Uh, is that <laughs> The backlog kind of turns in from what this was with the data reservoir with stream and evidence pool, and the reservoir will just keep on growing while the data stream doesn't change. So the backlog will just continue to grow, if that makes sense. So previously what I did was I took the, so say this line represents the data of a file. Previously, what previous research and the reduction techniques suggested was to look at the first 4K and last 4K of a file and hash that to uniquely identify a file much quicker. Now, my not an issue with this is the fact that the first 4K consisted of metadata, stuff that is easily changeable if you just change the, even if you just change the properties of an image, you change the camera model, the name of it, anything like that can change that, which kind of screws with the first 4Ks kind of robustness. And the last 4K can also have issues as if you just add a simple bit of 
uh, it's the same way you add salt to a hash. If you add a simple bit of data to the end, it can throw it off by a bit. So my approach was to take something from the middle. And originally I was thinking 4K to the left or the right, but it eventually became 4K bang in the middle. And the types, the, the aspects of them used was the file types, uh, which consisted namely of JPEGs and the file size, which was fixed. So I used Flickr 25K for this. But I also wanted to look at how unique the hashes would be, how accurate could this produce? So previous work, uh, as you can see reference there from Sean's PhD, is that the last 4K was the most accurate. The first 80 kilobytes was just a benchmark for Sean to work with, and the first 4K averaged at 97, 99% accurate. He used Flickr 1 million for this, as well as GovDocs PNG, just for a larger data set for his PhD. And again, that might be something I look at for the masters. But the influences on subfile performance for this was the file size I mentioned, Flickr 25, was how much data needs to be processed. The file system, which was run over an SSD. And one thing I was actually wanting to look at during my undergrad dissertation was how forensics over USB would also work. So USB data bus kind of overheads were also a massive factor in this as they came with limitations of their own. So I used an internal and external SSD for this. And the performance kind of metrics I was wanting to look at included kind of, is there any improvements in speed? Is it better, worse than the previous methods and reduction? Is it faster than current forensic techniques, full hashing? And that kind of led to these results. After testing it and after being able to do it, I also found a little snag in the fact that data that was required to be hashed was a lot more than we had anticipated. So what I had to do was I had to find a way to um, compare it. So I looked at temporal analysis. So I also worked with SOS JPEG markers, because as I said, worked primarily with JPEGs. And we used the SOS, the start of scan data, as a, as a marker to then hash from for so long. And we used one kilobyte for this, same as an initial benchmark. And we found that that tended to be 100% accurate in itself, as it was a tiny bit of file that never changed. But temporal analysis also showed it was a lot faster. So the mid file hash and the full hash were a bit, they, they were about on par for time over the external SSD. Bear in mind, these are with the USB overheads, which we'll get to in a second. The mid file hash and the full hash were on par minus a few milliseconds for how long it would take. The SOS data hash, the orange one, excuse me, was a lot quicker. And the first 1K hash is a benchmark I use to compare the SOS data. As I said, we only use 1K for the SOS data hash as well. So the significant difference that you can see there between them for the same size of data to be read would be down to the USB uh, data bus overheads that I mentioned, as well as the time it would take to read into the file, scan to that part of the file, uh, that JPEG marker, and then hash, uh, which would also have a minor impact. Uh, the average time over an internal SSD, as you can see at the bottom, the time difference drops by about 50 seconds, uh, as I've shown in the next graph. But as I said, the full hash and the mid-file hash were still on, about, uh, still on par for the time it takes. The SOS data hash was still a bit longer than the first uh, 1K hash of the file. But again, I put that down to the time it takes to read to the SOS data marker. But it was still roughly on par with the rest of it off by about two seconds, if I remember correctly. And as you can see in this one, it was a USB overhead average from uh, about 20 tests I ran to get these metrics. Uh, the remains relatively consistent, except SOS data hash, which was still quite quicker. And 
as you can see from this graph, the accuracy for full hash, mid file hash, and the SOS data hash was 100%. Now with the SOS data hash, I kind of expected it to be 100%, same with the full hash as a full hash is the actual image. And as discussed, the first 1K hash was never going to be accurate. And as I previously mentioned, the block size used for the mid file hash was a lot more than anticipated. It was 26K, which was a lot more than we thought it might be. We thought it might be down 4K max, uh, but testing kind of proved difficult with the fact that we couldn't quite get 100% accuracy for some reason. And I think that's one of the bugs I am intending to fix in the master's dissertation. And as I mentioned previous, the average time taken for internal and external SSDs can be seen there as well, where the full hash took about the same as the SOS hash, uh, not the SOS hash, sorry, the mid file hash, where they were off by about 0.2 seconds between them, as well as the first 1K being there for benchmarking reasons in comparison to the SOS data hash, as they were both 1K, where you can see that there's four seconds, or well, just over four seconds between them on the internal SSD and barely that between them on the external SSD. And that kind of brings me to the conclusions I was able to draw from this dissertation was the fact that was it more accurate than current methodologies? That was answered by the standard testing. So what I did was I took the approach I had as well as just full hashing and changed the file headers, the metadata, the, and appended a wee bit to the end as well. And from that, it, full hashing was not able to identify the images uniquely as the hash had changed entirely just by changing the metadata. But the mid file hash wasn't affected by this, so it was able to identify it. And the SOS data marker was the exact same. It didn't change that effect. Was it quicker than current methodologies? Slightly. So as I said, I was working with 25K Flickr, which isn't as much as I'd hoped for, but was enough to kind of develop this methodology. And what I'm going to do with the master's dissertation is take this approach and expand on it. Uh, I'm, I've just purchased an internal SSD, which is about three terabytes, which I plan on filling with just a ton of crap and chucking in Flickr 1 million that Sean used. And from there, I'm going to have one image hash that I intend to look at through the entire three terabytes of the SSD, which will then have a significant more uh, accurate temporal representation of will it be quicker or not than a full file hash, um, from which we'll be able to determine if it's actually worth doing this approach or not. And what currently exists and did I add to it? Again, that's yet to be determined. Um, it is a viable approach. It does produce results that are 100% accurate um, without the metadata being changed for the full file hash, but it stands to reason that there are ways to probably screw with it, which I intend to try and discover again within the master's dissertation. And which approach was more robust? As I mentioned, the metadata was changed. There was salt added to the end of the hash for the... Um, for the images and I was kind of putting them to the test and seeing which one stood scrutiny, which was easy enough to determine as I previously mentioned, which brings me to what I'm planning to do next on the masters, which is, I've lost my thing, there we go. Oh, I forgot that was there. Uh, as I said, a larger data set, which can be seen here, which is again from Sean's, uh, he, noted that the larger amount of data to be hashed for a full hash, the longer it took, whereas his 4K data set stayed relatively the same. And that's because the, you're hashing the same amount of data each time. So it's my intention to try and see whether or not this will stand up scrutiny for my approach as well. Um, I'm sorry I've had to cut this quite short. Uh, I do have a meeting to get to, unfortunately. But does anyone have any questions or any kind of suggestions that I'll definitely open to um, to try and figure out where I can go with this as well? Because the master's dissertation, there is a lot I want to cover, but 
I want to make sure I cover everything as well. So if anyone has suggestions, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask.